good afternoon students it's a pandemic period so you have to take care and this is the online lecture on bio and organic chemistry today is the 3rd may monday it is and we are studying bio and organic chemistry how that organic chemistry it helps in a inorganic chemistry last lecture we have seen about the elements in the nature from our food the plants how they are important for our life and that's what although whole the ecosystem it fully depends upon the elements bio inorganic chemistry the reactions which correlates with the biological system other than the carbon or we can say with relate with the carbon hydrogen oxygen the other elements they work a very important role in our body and the surrounding also that's what this topic it is very important for study purposes and you will have that a different career opportunities with this topic let us see last lecture you studied about the elements and they work alkali metals alkaline earth metals where they found and how they important now the reactions and the working of these elements let us see one by one bio inorganic chemistry or we can say how that organic is become a inorganic evolution of life essential elements let us see earth solidified it is long back ago that is 4 billions approximately years ago so the 81 stable elements are present now on the earth and these 81 elements correlatively direct or indirect they relates with our body our surrounding and whole the ecosystem the impact elements of the living organisms elements with large concentration that we required every day for our survival for our living they are 11 elements that is carbon hydrogen nitrogen oxygen they are present in the earth crust sodium in the air sodium magnesium phosphorus sulfur chlorine potassium and calcium so these are the elements 11 elements which we require day to day activity second it is elements with small concentration they are seven elements but they are micro elements but they required and they crucially did that very small small reactions uh, which relates with our body systems and also in the ecosystem that is manganese iron cobalt copper zinc iodine and the molybdenum and another seven elements which are very few but they required that is boron fluorine fluorine silicon vanadium chromium selenium and the tin the transit elements the role of the transition elements that is the transition metals some of them are iron copper and the molybdenum these are working as a electron transfer so that whatever the blood flows or that a uh, liquid flows or that a uh, enzyme creates or that it can flow we can drink water we can take food or uh, in the surroundings when the rivers and the oceans are there so that electron transfers they form by the iron copper and the molybdenum also these are useful for the redox proteins and the enzymes also it is that oxygen carrying proteins and the nitrogen fixation so from our body whatever the reactions it happens and we can survive we can grow uh, uh, whatever the life we can having that is due to the iron copper and the molybdenum next it is the zinc it is very minute very uh, important element that is the metal enzymes it forms structure promoters it is lewis acid acts and now a redox catalyst also other metal ions these are less well defined or more of the roles obscure roles so that iron that is ferrous to ferric or the ferrous or ferric or ferrous and the ferric they are essential for all organisms we are knowing our blood has the color 
and that activity is due to the iron. In plants, iron deficiency. In human body, it is 4 to 5 gram it requires. And uptake it is 1 milligram per day. So, whatever the grains, food grains are there and that beet or we can say that leafy vegetables they are when we are to be having that the habit to intake so we can do this that iron intake it is in a proper manner in human body hem iron it is 75 percent and 25 percent it is non hem iron so rubridoxins and ferridoxins are the non hem iron but the iron which is of having or that correlate with the hem it is hemoglobin myoglobin cytochromes and oxidase p450 that is 450 so these four are the 75 percent hem iron which present in our body copper one and the copper two these elements <coughs> are plant animals that electron transport or oxygen carrying the reaction which it forms and the protection of dna from oxygen so copper one and the copper two they acts for these purposes copper proteins and enzymes cytochrome oxi oxidase o2 and h2 tyrosinase phenol oxidase that is oxophenols ceruloplasmin that is ferrous and the ferric and the blue proteins that is electron transfer and superoxide dismutase that is the elimination of oxygen and the hemocyanin that is oxygen transfer so moreover that oxygen transfer the food intake and the excrete and the urine formation every reaction it is to be done by this copper one and the copper two so it monetizes another it is superoxide dismutase so here superoxide dismutase which is forms the c and the concentrate on the slide where that the reactions are to be forming so copper 2 plus oxygen there is the formation of a copper 1 and the oxygen which binds in the body another copper 1 and oxygen plus 2 hydrogen that is that the copper 2 plus plus h2o2 so likewise the reaction superoxide dismutase it forms so copper zinc the elements which are to be helpful for these purposes another it is the role of zinc 2 it is having or it is used in the deficiencies which is of disturbances of reproductive system so that time we can have that a zinc as it is dwarfism so that is also the deficiency which forms by the zinc skin lesions that is also formed by the zinc and the skeletal abnormalities which we have seen in some humans that is due to the deficiency of zinc so zinc we have to increase the ink uh, intake of it now the non aromatic amino, amino acids see the slide the cystocysm with that x and cystocysm 7 that is non aromatic amino acids which are to be formed with the zinc so zinc metalloenzymes that is 80 and the activated enzymes that is the 20 so likewise that the reaction and the bonding it is to be formed by the function of zinc in metal enzymes it is a structure promoter substrate binder and acts as a lewis acid so it is very important in the nervous system or the brain uh, activation so outline structure of apoparin which is shown on the slide this is the another slide which we have that iron 2 proto porphyrin that is the nine complex it is a heme so many many times we have seen that how that iron it is to be binding with the other elements this is the myoglobin structure and the hemoglobin structure many times it is asked in the examination to draw the structure so we have to first of all recognize how it is the binding it form and the function of the iron and the zinc catalytic cycle p450 enzymes this is also shown on this reaction where we have to be seen and the figure on the slide which it shows that the contributions of enzymes to the metabolism of marketed drugs the results are from a study of Pfizer drugs 
and similar percentage have been reported by others in the pharmaceutical companies. The structure A, it is the fraction of reactions on drug catalyzed by various human enzymes, FMO, that flavine containing monooxygenase and acetyl transferase and monoamine oxidase. And the B structure which shows that the fraction of P450 labeled which is, which is of 3A4 plus 3A5 is mainly due to the P450 3A4 with some controversy about exactly how much is contributed by other subfamilies. So these are the structures which mentions that that the experimental and theoretical in a pharmaceutical in a way. Carbon hydroxylation. So in this slide you have seen about the reactions with ferric, ferric oxide how it is to be bonded with that uh, carbon. Heteroatoms releases and the working of heteroatom oxygenase and the epoxylation and the group migration which it forms. So this reaction you have to draw in your book. Another one that the structure on the slide it explains that zinc 2 in the active center of carboxypeptidase. So this is the enzyme and the active center of the alcohol dehydrogenase on the another structure. So the coordination environment of the copper center in orin it is also shown on the structure. Then reversible oxygen oxygenation hemocyanin. So this is the structure it explains that the dimethyl center of copper and the zinc superoxide dismutase. Another slide which expresses that exposes the supposed structure of iron, sulfur, and molybdenum cofactor of the nitrogenase, where that the enzyme and that work or the dinitrogenase mechanism it follows. Next, it is coordination environment of the chromium 3 plus center in the glucose tolerance factor. So, this is the structure where we have to be seen about that which we required. 30 milli, uh, milligrams. So, dear students, the mechanism you have to first of all under, understand, read it carefully, see the slides twice, thrice till you understand. Draw the structures on your notebook and that uh, if you have any difficulty to understand, please mail me. Thank you. Stay safe. It's a COVID-19 pandemic period. So, that's what that online lectures are going on. Wash your, your hands carefully. Stay safe. Keep updating your skills and the knowledge. Please help to your parents. Thank you. Thank you very much.